Prince Harry and Meghan paid a visit to Canada House in London earlier today. Why? They wanted to say thank you. The pair is grateful for their holiday time in this country, far from the pressures of the spotlight. And there's talk they may do more work over here in 2020. Canada's High Commissioner to the UK greeted Harry and Meghan with tea and what else? Nanaimo bars. That Canadian treat may bring back memories of their quiet Christmas with young son Archie on Vancouver Island. Canada has played a big role in their relationship, or at least we like to think so, right? Meghan lived here for seven years while she was shooting the TV series Suits, and Prince Harry has made frequent visits, especially during their courtship. My next guest was at Canada House for the Royals' visit. Omid Scobie is a royal commentator in London, and he joins me right now. Great to have you on the program, Omid. Always nice to see the Royals on the air. How did Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's visit go today at Canada House? Hi, Suhana. Yeah, it was a great start for 2020 for Harry and Meghan, their official return to engagement. And what better way to thank Canada for the lovely hospitality that they experienced while staying out in Vancouver. For just over six weeks, they got to spend Thanksgiving, Christmas, and of course, the new year with Archie in peace before the identity of the location was revealed. And of course, today was a chance not just to go and visit Canada House to say thank you, but also to have a conversation about some of the things that they could do together in the future. Of course, Harry and Meghan have a lot of things in common with some of Canada's interests, like female and young girls empowerment, climate change, and also youth empowerment too. So for them, as uh, Commonwealth ambassadors, it was a real great opportunity to sort of build, build a relationship. And you know, how great. They got Nanaimo bars. I'm sure they had candied salmon and pancakes with maple syrup when they were on the West Coast. But there is so much more to our country than amazing food. What do you think they could do here in Canada to increase uh, their own uh, sense, uh, uh, you know, in the world and Canada's? Yeah, well, I, I had a chat with uh, the High Commissioner, who had obviously spent a lot of time with Harry and Meghan, and she said that it was a, today was a great chance for them to really talk about some of the things that they have in common with Canada's interests. So we're talking about democratic empowerment of women and young girls, but also helping youth, youth leaders in Canada and across the Commonwealth. So there's a, many different areas where I think that we can see them really come together and work on things with the country. Of course, Canada, as you mentioned earlier, holds a really special place in both of their hearts. Harry hasn't mentioned where the next Invictus Games after this year's one at The Hague will be. So we may find out that he may be taking it to Canada again. And where they can maybe get some peace and quiet. Do you think they managed to do that away from the paparazzi on our beautiful West Coast? I think they did. You know, Harry and Meghan today had a real sort of like rejuvenated energy to them. As we saw, 2019 had some real high moments, also had some low moments. And I think this was a great start to the year for them. For the most part of the trip, they were in privacy until one of the British tabloids revealed their location. But that was very much towards the end of the trip. And I think that they really got to experience the beautiful outdoors on Vancouver Island. Meghan herself spoke about how beautiful it was out there. And I think for them, this was a great start to 2020. How do you think uh, the couple's trip uh, was perceived in the UK? I'm wondering if there was a lot of attention there about the couple being in Canada with Archie. Yeah, you know, I think with Canada being a Commonwealth country and, of course, both of them being involved with the Commonwealth themselves, Harry is Commonwealth Youth Ambassador, Meghan is Vice President of the Queen's Commonwealth Trust. It mm -hmm. made sense that they spent the holidays within the Commonwealth. I think it would have been very different if they were in the US. That was much rumoured at the time. But they spent it in Canada. Of course, we get along great with Canada. I think it was great to see them spending time somewhere that they loved and really enjoying some rest because it was the first time that they rested in all of 2019. And they had a chance to bond as, you know, a, a young couple with a young son. How much of that do they actually get to do in London? Not much. You know, their life out in Windsor is quite isolated. You know, everywhere they go, there is, of course, uh, people that recognize them. Britain and London is a fairly small place, so we don't have the sort of expansive outdoors that you guys have, and certainly they experience when they're staying out in Vancouver. And I think that really afforded them some privacy. They were able to go on hikes, go out for a few dinners, and really not be noticed by that many people. Anything surprise you about them? Did they say A? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, they haven't come back with any Canadian lingo. Uh, I, I do I do hear that they both love the Nanaimo bar, so I think that's something that they've brought home with them. Megan is sort of an honorary Canadian anyway. She really has sort of in love with Canada. She considers Toronto one of her homes, so I think that for her it was a great chance to reconnect with the country and spend a bit of time with Harry and Archie there too. Well, tell her it's going to be about six or seven or eight degrees on Saturday, so maybe they'll want to fly back. Ooh. But I, I want to thank you for your time, Omid. Great to have you on the show. Great speaking, Zana. Omid Scobie is a royal commentator, and we reached him in London.